Hi, Hi babies. My name is Dr. Stephanie Kaplan. I'm a board-certified fellowship-trained cosmetic dermatologist in Newport Beach, California. And today I wanted to do a video on lasers and just an overview of lasers in general because I know that this could be a very overwhelming topic when you're doing your online searches. So before I move on, I ask that you like and subscribe and share this channel with anyone who wants non-sponsored content by board-certified dermatologists. So the reason why I wanted to do this video is because my patients always come in asking me, Dr. Kappel, it's so overwhelming what laser to choose and there's so many different kinds and there's so many different types of lasers and how do I find a laser provider who I can trust? And I think that hopefully after watching this video, I'm gonna break it down into a very simple overview of how to think about lasers when you're doing your online searches. And hopefully in the future, if you guys like this video, I could do subsequent videos where we take a deeper dive into each individual laser or different skin ailments that can be treated with lasers and how they work. But for today's video, I just want to keep it simple because it's an already overwhelming area of expertise. So in talking about lasers, there's three kind of main types of lasers that you'll see if you're looking online. You have lasers for hair removal, you have lasers for tattoo removal, and then you have lasers for photorejuvenation or rejuvenation of the skin, which we call resurfacing lasers. And in my office in Newport Beach, you know, I'm a laser specialist, lasers are my area of expertise, and we have lasers that are only used for photorejuvenation and rejuvenating lasers. And I often will be asked by my patients, well, hey, Dr. Cabell, can you get rid of these fine lines wrinkles under my eyes and can you get rid of these brown spots and then also I want some laser hair removal down there or I have this tattoo that I want removed on my arm and I feel like it can be very confusing knowing what lasers are used for each individual treatment. So the lasers I have in my office are all for rejuvenation. I don't have laser tattoo removal devices. I don't have um, hair removal devices and that's the reason why and not to get too technical but lasers that are used for tattoo and hair removal are very different than those that are used for rejuvenation, like a Fraxel, because they're very, they're slow. They're slower lasers. Of course, in like laser physics terms, they're slow, but they're pretty, they're still pretty fast. But when you're talking about a laser that's going to treat or remove tattoo pigment, which is a big molecule, or you know, hair removal, which the you know follicle and the hair follicle with the pigment there is a very large molecule, those are what we call long pulse lasers or slower lasers in laser physics. Lasers that are used in rejuvenation rejuvenating treatments like Fraxel or Clear and Brilliant or a CO2 or an Erbium, those are very fast lasers. We, are, we call them Q-switch lasers, nanopulse lasers, pico lasers. Pico just means a trillionth of a second, a picosecond, which is very, very fast because the chromophore, what the laser is attracted to, is very, very small when you're talking about resurfacing lasers as opposed to bigger molecules like tattoo mm -hmm. pigment or hair follicle pigment. So hopefully that'll make sense and hopefully that will kind of correct the misconception that lasers that are used to eliminate fine lines and wrinkles can also be used to remove tattoo and hair. So the other thing that I wanted to touch upon is how are lasers different than energy-based devices? People get this confused all the time. They'll think that thermage is a laser or, or therapy is a laser. The difference between lasers and energy-based devices is lasers are light. They're collimated light in a coherent wavelength. And again, I'm gonna try not to get too scientific, but I know you guys follow me and I know you understand this. And lasers use photons in the form of light that are in a coherent wavelength that are attracted to something. That could be melanin for brown spots, hemoglobin for redness or rosacea, trying to treat flushing. It could be water, which is the chromophore used for resurfacing acne scars, fine lines, wrinkles, and so forth. That's different than energy-based devices, which use heat in the form of a certain type of energy. For ultrasound, that could be, or for old therapy, that could be multifocal ultrasound. For thermage, it could be monopolar or bipolar radio frequency. So it could be radio frequency, it could be ultrasound, it could be microwave, anything that puts heat in in the form you know, of any type of energy into the skin to stimulate the fibroblasts, which are the collagen producing cells, those are energy-based devices. Energy-based devices are different than lasers. Lasers use light. So hopefully that will kind of um, clarify any misconception, the difference between lasers and energy-based devices, and they're not interchangeable. And a lot of people will say, oh, Thermage is a great laser. It's not a laser, it's an energy-based device. So hopefully that makes sense. The other thing that I wanted to delineate is broadband light. So things like IPL, BBL, these are kind of lower tiered devices that you'll find like in medi spas, but you don't really find in like dermatology practices or with physicians or surgeons. We use more, you know, lasers instead of BBL or IPL, which are not 
truly lasers. They're just broadband light. We always used to joke around, be like, we might as well put a flashlight on our face because it's broadband light. You slap on a filter and try to make it look like and act like a laser, but it doesn't have the elegance or the precision of a laser. They're just basically a cheap knockoff of a laser. So hopefully I don't offend anyone out there, but BBL and IPL, um, IPL just stands for intense pulse light. BBL just stands for broadband light. And I remember when I did my laser fellowship, we worked in a two-story laser institution with every device known to man. We had hundreds of these devices and lasers. And I remember the IPL and BBL room were just, they're sitting there collecting dust because those devices aren't lasers and they really can't hold a candle to a laser. They're just kind of, I like to think of it as like a cheap knockoff of a laser. It's light that they put a filter on to try to make it act like a laser, but the results are usually you know, not up to par as lasers are. And so um, on a side note, we, you know, we usually see a lot of like hyperpigmentation and sometimes um, treatments with IPL or BBL can temporarily look okay, but then people end up being a lot more hyperpigmented and worse off after the IPL or BBL, which is why I'm, you know, I've always been a laser girl and I'm a, you know, a huge laser fan because I feel like the elegance and the technology and the precision is at such a caliber that it gives, um, you know, exceptional results. Now to find an operator who knows how to, um, perform these 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 treatments and to handle these laser settings is you know a little bit harder to find than somebody who's going to be able to give an IPL or BBL treatment but when you find that laser specialist who understands lasers and laser physics and can customize each laser treatment to your skin type and what you're trying to achieve there's nothing really like it there's nothing else that comes close so I touched on this earlier, but I always like to also explain to my patients how lasers work. So just like we explained before, lasers are engineered and categorized based on the wavelength. And the wavelength determines what they're attracted to. In laser medicine, we call that a chromophore. So for example, hemoglobin is, is what redness is treated with, you talk about like a V-beam or a KTP or an XLV or a 532, those are lasers that are targeted to treat hemoglobin and those are kind of the get their redness out lasers. Lasers that are targeted to hyperpigmentation, melasma, solar lentigines, sunspots, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, melanin is the chromophore and lasers are cat or engineered in a coherent wavelength that corresponds with the chromophore melanin. And those are the lasers that are used to treat hyperpigmentation and darkness. Now, when you're talking about resurfacing lasers, lasers that improve the texture of the skin, those can be, there's several different wavelengths that target water as the chromophore. When water is the chromophore, it could be a CO2, an erbium, a fraxel, a halo. There's different lasers that are attracted to water as the chromophore. And those are the lasers that are used to help the texture of the skin. That's what we call surfacing. It helps the skin stimulate collagen. It helps the skin stimulate elastin synthesis. It helps cellular renewal. It remodels scarring, whether that's a post-surgical scar or an acne scar. It helps shrink pore size, and it just can help smooth the texture of weathered skin or sun-damaged skin. Those are lasers that are attracted to water as the chromophore. Also, sorry if you hear a gardener in the background because I'm literally, I have to do these videos when I can find a nice, peaceful, quiet space in the house and I'm hiding from my kids and from our dog. Look, Justin's even right here doing some work done. <laughs> Okay, when talking about resurfacing lasers or photo rejuvenation lasers, you hear ablative and non-ablative. Those are the two main categories of rejuvenating lasers. Now, the difference between ablative and non-ablative lasers are ablative lasers are a little bit more aggressive. They're a little bit stronger than non-ablative. And what happens is when you have a laser treatment, the photons that are hitting the skin can either vaporize the tissue and actually remove little columns of skin out of the skin and the surrounding skin that's untreated gets kind of repopulates that area that was treated so it's kind of out with the old in within you and it stimulates all those things that you want our skin to do collagen synthesis elastin synthesis cellular renewal remodeling scar tissue getting rid of scar tissue and replacing it with healthy viable young tissue that's what lasers do and you can either do it by removing that skin or just heating it up. So non-ablative lasers don't vaporize the tissue and remove it. They just kind of heat up that treated area, those columns, those zones of treatment as we call it, and just heat up that tissue but don't actually remove it. So what that translates to is the downtime for a laser. For a ablative laser where you're removing those little vaporized areas of tissue, the downtime will look like pinpoint bleeding, it'll look more red, it'll be more significant for the week following the procedure than non-ablative lasers which just 
make you a little bit red and swollen. You look almost just more flushed as if you got out of a hot shower or a hot yoga class and a little bit of swelling, but not as bad as the downtime is with um, a fully ablative or an ablative laser. Now that's not to scare you to say that the ablative lasers aren't worth it. They're definitely worth it. And they're a little bit more um, substantial results, but with the trade-off of more downtime and having you know a little bit more post laser treatment care that you have to do as opposed to a non-ablative laser, which has a quicker turnaround time and less aftercare. So you can also categorize lasers based on their wavelength or their depth of penetration. So if you have a clear and brilliant laser, that's a very light resurfacing laser. There's no pain with numbing cream or downtime. It's a very quick and easy procedure that you know really won't impede you from going on about your, your life after the treatment. People usually just get it during their lunch break and they can go back to work and resume their normal activities. When you go one step further, you can go to like a Fraxel Restore, which we also call Fraxel Dual, which is a non-ablative laser, but it's a little bit deeper, a little bit stronger, but still a non-ablative laser. So your downtime isn't nothing, but it's maybe four to six days of a little bit of redness and swelling. Then you hop over to the next level and you go to like a CO2 or a fully ablative laser or an erbium laser where the downtime is definitely more significant. It's still about one week. All the lasers have, a, you know, or the lasers that have downtime, the downtime is usually four to six days, but they vary with how intense that downtime is. With this erbium or a CO2 ablative laser, you have pinpoint bleeding. You often have to do something called vinegar soaks or some aftercare um, to, you know, minimize infection and to just, you know, um, help with healing process that's a little bit more intense than a non-ablative laser. So you always can think about it clear and brilliant, Fraxel Restore or Fraxel Dual or like a CO2 or an Erbium. And so that's how I always kind of um, categorize it for my patients because each individual patient is different. Some people were like, okay, doctor, I want my skin to be flawless. I don't care what it takes. I want a one and done treatment. I just flew in from the East Coast. I don't live in California, but I'm here seeing you for one day. Let's just go. Let's do it. Then we'll do a more heavy duty laser. If someone's like, ooh, I'm just getting into the aesthetic space. I'm just starting to take care of my skin. I don't really have a lot of downtime. I don't want to invest too much. I just kind of want to dip my toe in the water, not jump in the pool. Then we'll do like a clear and brilliant, but always, you know, better than sometimes people want kind of like middle of the road, which is a Fraxel. I'm willing to do a little bit of downtime, but I don't want to completely be out and I want it to be a pretty easy experience, uh, but nothing too gnarly. And I want a little bit more of a response than I would get with a very light laser, like a clear and brilliant. Then we go middle of the road. So those are kind of the differences. They all are resurfacing lasers. They're all going to help smooth out fine lines and wrinkles and shrink pore size and be useful for acne scars. But it just depends on which you know level of aggressiveness you want when you're trying to choose a laser. And there's no right or wrong choice. And it's not like if you did a clear and brilliant and then, you know, six months later you do a Fraxel, that clear and brilliant just kind of gets swiped free and you just wasted your treatment. There's no such thing as a wasted laser treatment and they're all additive to one another when it comes to optimal and um, improving skin health. The other thing that I wanted to kind of categorize for you guys are fractionated or fraxel versus non-fractionated or fully ablative. So when you hear the term fraxel, that's just a blanket statement of the technology of that laser. So it doesn't have to be fraxel, which is actually the name of like the fraxel repair or the fraxel restore. Fraxel or fractionated laser just means that you're treating a portion, a fraction of the skin. So if you look at the spot size or the treatment area, you're poking holes in the skin and just treating a percentage. It could be 8%, it could be 20% of the surface area that the laser handpiece is coming in contact with with the skin. Now that's different than fully ablative laser like a CO2 where you're basically just wiping out that top layer of the epidermis full thickness all the way through. Those are a little bit more gnarly, a little bit more intense. But when you hear the term Fraxel, that's just saying like car. You can have a Lambo, you can have a Prius, you can have a Ferrari. There's different cars and you know, that just goes under the blanket term of Fraxel. So Fraxel doesn't necessarily mean the Fraxel you know, name brand of a laser, it just means a fractional or fractionated resurfacing device. And the newer technology are more, you know, it's more favorable to have a fractionated laser treatment because the results after that studies have shown us is that the results are pretty equivocal whether you're taking off the full thickness, full epidermal layer, or taking out portions or fractions of the skin. But the fractionated um, devices have a quicker turnaround time, less downtime, a little bit easier on the patient with pretty, you know, um, equivocal 
um, results in outcomes. So that's why the new mainstay of therapy is more towards fractionated devices. So without making this video too long or lengthy or overwhelming, um, hopefully you'll understand lasers a little bit better, especially when it comes to photo rejuvenation or resurfacing lasers. And I've always been interested in lasers, and this is my area of expertise because unlike injectables or filler, now we're seeing this epidemic of overfilled faces and people just looking weird with too much injectables. Lasers transform the skin at a cellular level, and they can be customized and and, and specialized to kind of be customized to each individual skin type, what you're looking for, what your goals are. And it's very customizable. And when you have a laser surgeon who understands how to operate these devices, there's nothing like it. And you don't need makeup or concealer to hide blemishes. You're basically fixing them at the cellular level. And there's nothing like having healthy, fresh, clear skin. And that's what lasers can change. It can attain without making you look overdone or weird or with facial asymmetry or overfilled faces or like a facial droop from neuromodulators and that's not to say I'm, I don't love injectables I definitely you know it, it's a large percent of my practice but lasers and tightening devices can definitely inherently change the skin on a cellular level which results in youthful looking bright fresh skin without the need for makeup to cover anything up and you're doing it by stimulating the skin cells to act and behave younger and you're treating these skin ailments on a cellular level which gives manifest with beautiful natural healthy looking results and just being a most surgeon for decades I spent years and years looking at skin under the microscope and I was always astounded when I would see somebody pre and post, for example, like a Fraxel or a CO2, because histologically under the microscope, their collagen would be thin and degraded, their elastin fibers, they'd have solar elastosis, which is a phenomenon when your elastin fibers get all just fragmented and they're non-functional and that creates saggy, wrinkled skin and large pores. And then they'd have, you know, two or three laser treatments under their belt and I'd look at their skin under their microscope and clinically they would look amazing. Their face would look tighter, fresher, younger, brighter, healthier. And then under the microscope, that would correlate with thick, healthy collagen bundles and very healthy, you know, um, functional elastic fibers. And to have that histological clinical correlation and see how powerful lasers are, um, which is really interesting to me and really um, motivating for me. And I, I, I've loved lasers since early on in my career and definitely have made it an area of expertise for myself and um, love treating patients day every day um, with different laser treatments and combination laser therapies that I can customize to each individual patient's experience. So hopefully this will make sense to you um, after watching this video. And again, in subsequent videos, I can get into a deeper dive for you know lasers for redness or lasers for pigmentation. And I know we covered lasers for rejuvenation today, but we can even take it a step further into subcategories of these lasers. So hopefully this will be useful and it wasn't too overwhelming for you guys drop a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think and what else you guys want to hear about all things lasers and anything else as well thank you so much for watching